Hey now, I'm Wit, and welcome to another Steel Dive unboxing. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, I uh, unwrapped the outer packaging because there were multiple watches in it. And as if I didn't know from the label, you can tell which one is the SD1969 from the weight. This thing's heavy. Let's get into it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm kind of surprised actually for the uh, watch at the top of the price range for Steel Dive uh, that it didn't come in some kind of a more significant box. Uh, it's just the, the usual Steel Dive box, but uh, I guess it's probably economical for shipping that way. And um, at the end of the day, who really cares about the box? These are decent enough, right? As long as it gets shipped here uh, without breaking. All right, you see this one came with a extra uh, silicone rubber band. See with the uh, two keepers that slide and branded on the brushed stainless steel buckle. Very nice. These actually feel better in person than they look. I always thought they were kind of cheap and um, they look decent on the watch, but it just they look like they were going to be kind of cheap, but uh, seems like decent quality actually surprised yes oh we can almost see it <laughs> i'm going to show you this first because obviously we got the uh warranty uh guarantee and then this is new uh they actually have an instructions uh kit now too oh there you go and there's the three different uh logos military diver green marine and army engineer diver which this one should be army engineer diver all right let's see what this is all about Get the bubble wrap out of the way. Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. And, mmm. I like that. Boy, that's what this does to you. Man, let's unwrap it so we can see more. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Yes. Oh man, look at this. So this is the uh, Steel Dive SD 1969, which is obviously an homage to the uh, Omega or Amiga, however you say it, uh, Plongeur Professionnel, which is my poor uh, French uh, uh, expression of the translation of professional diver. That's what it translates to uh, English. And uh, you can see they've matched the uh, the look pretty well, right? I mean, um, from the handset to the uh, the bezel plunger. Uh, helium escape valve, uh, right to the uh, protected crown, uh, and the uh, the bezel. Um, uh, all kind of the Steel Dive uh, inspired version of it, right? It looks really nice. Uh, so let's uh, get into it a little. I'll start off with the bracelet. Um, I, this comes on a, uh, a shark uh, mesh, or you can get this engineered style bracelet, or just the regular silicone strap. And I chose this one. I figured it would balance the watch head a little better since it is so hefty hefty um, but uh, unfortunately it looks like it's just the typical um, steel dive bracelet um, you see you've got the uh, signature and logo on the clasp safety clasp there double push button and whoop there it is <laughs> it's not what we wanted to see right uh, press clasp so I'm surprised I figure at this price range that uh, they would have at least uh, kind of upgraded the uh, the bracelet a little. So, but the good news is uh, with this style, at least if you have smaller wrists, is you see the articulation here and especially right at the lugs. So, you've got the ability to really factor in the lug to lug length uh, when sizing this watch for yourself. And I'll go over the measurements here in a little while. We'll measure them. So let's talk about the bezel. Uh, so this is version two, as you might have seen on the um, the writing on the uh, case box, the uh, watch box. Uh, I believe the only ver the only difference between version one and version two is this bezel. So the other bezel had more of a modern look to it, actually, as it as it ends up, and this one uh, tends to have more of that retro look. So, but you've got sapphire crystal, and uh, it looks to be a little thicker than usual. You can see that blue anti-reflective coating uh, around the edge is where it's playing with some of the light. Uh, got that slight uh, beveled edge to the crystal. Looks like it might sit up uh, just a touch. Yeah, you can see it's just a touch 
raised above the bezel. Still kind of hard to see because it's just ever so slightly, as I like to say. <laughs> Let me stay uh, with the bezel. So the idea is that you push this with one finger, which I imagine it would be this one, your middle finger, and then you rotate. And once you let off that lever, I guess I should zoom back out so you can see everything. Once you let off that lever, it's locked. It's a fixed uh, bezel, uh, but it is bi-directional. Uh, I'm going to use two hands because it's easier, but you can see it goes either way. But as soon as you let up off of the trigger, it stops. And you can do this with your left hand, one-handed as well. If you're a lefty, then I imagine it would just be like this. And again, it's harder for me to do with the watch not on wrist, and I'm not left-handed. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the idea of the... Uh, the push button, you've got that locked in place, so there's no way you're going to accidentally bump it. So once you set it, it's really where you last set it. So we'll spin back around to the uh, top. I'll use two hands again since I can. And, okay, I'm looking off camera, and that is lined up. And that's something I, I wanted to kind of touch on, too, while I've got this opportunity. It's really hard to see the uh, alignment of bezel uh, in the camera. Uh, we have to do it off camera and then kind of hold it. Uh, to where it's right. But if you look right now, I just checked off camera and it's in alignment. But look at the uh, three and the nine. It's because the watch is at a little a bit of an angle this way. So as soon as I get it back dead on center, now everything lines up again, right? And if I tilt it this way, now look at 25. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating here so you see the difference. My point is if it's like this, look at the 25 looks off, but it doesn't look like the watch is crooked. So you really got to trust your uh, YouTube, your YouTuber, your watch reviewer. So hopefully you've got people you can trust. And if they say that their bezel is aligned, they mean that it is uh, on that particular watch. That's all you can do, right? So it's BGW9 loom all the way across, and uh, we'll show you that in a loom shot a little later. So again, the uh, helium escape valve is there, and uh, that is a one-way valve. It's uh, automatic operation. You don't do anything uh, with it, uh, which brings me to a point. So on the watch, it says 1,200 meters, 4,000 feet, right? So on their listing, it's it does say 1,200 meters waterproof, but then another section, it says 100 bar, which 100 bar is 1,020 meters, not 1,200 so I'm a little leery. <laughs> I, I doubt this is really a 1,200 meter water resistant watch. But do I believe it's 300 meters? Yeah, I, I could go with that. I mean, all the other watches, I uh, haven't had any uh, cause to believe that they weren't 200 meters uh, as, as they're labeled. So I'm just not sure about this now. I mean, that it just didn't give me any confidence uh, to see the listing that way. Um, and maybe it's just a language barrier, uh, something with a conversion. I, I don't know. But, I mean, as into watches as they are, I can't imagine that, you know, the little mistake like that would just um, happen on accident. So not sure what to think there. But, again, I don't think anybody's going to buy a steel dive <laughs> just to go down that deep. A, you're not going that deep. But, you know, so, I mean, I, I think, again, you buy it for what it is. It's uh, it's a great diver watch for just normal recreational diving and um, I would trust that it would it work in that regard. And then there's the usual way we wear it, right? No diving at all, swimming, <laughs> or maybe some snorkeling in the ocean or what have you, right? But uh, I think it's more about the the style and the looks uh, in this category than actual divers. Um, but that's not true for everybody. This could be you know a nice actual dive watch for the right person. I just think most of us are not divers, and it shows. Uh, particularly when people talk about oxygen, right? Uh, <laughs> nobody's diving with oxygen, it's air. <laughs> so I always find that funny. And uh, we'll get into the uh, movement. So the crown protection here, you see this is, uh, from what I understand, there's a uh, a rod there and there that go into the uh, side of the case, and then it's hinged somehow on the uh, back of the crown. But basically, once you, I'm trying to loosen with my fingers out of the way so you can see, once you start to screw out the crown, and this is different uh, left-handed, uh, I'm not used to that. Um, once it pops out to that unthreaded click, so now you see it's, it's still kind of, it's there, it's stuck in place. It's not going to go anywhere, all right? And then once we go out to, say, for the, the date, there's the first click. Whoop. Oh, I'm in the second click. Let me go back in one. Ooh. So it did come out. 
So see, there you go. Let me zoom in and show you that, just so you know how it's built. Okay, so there's the sides that the those two go into. You can see their form fit. That's why it doesn't move around a bunch. Got it. And then that, that's awkward the way it's... Let's see if we can put it back together to look. See, it's got um, a bigger, yeah, okay, so it just kind of grabs a little. It's not super tight, but you see the how the hole is uh, larger here at the top side and then skinnier down here towards the middle. So I guess the idea is that uh, it gets a little bit of tension as it gets closer. Okay, I've got an update to the uh, Crown Guard Shroud. So I reached out to the manufacturer after I recorded the unboxing video and asked them if this was an intentional design or if this is something that shouldn't have happened. And they basically responded saying that uh, they also discovered the inconvenience. So, And they, and they said that the new stock that they have uh, does not have this issue, that the uh, shroud will not fall off. So just keep that in mind based on uh, when and where you uh, order from. Uh, but I actually, uh, as of right now, don't mind this. I actually think I kind of prefer it because, A, I keep my watches running because I like to time them and stuff. And uh, so I'm not in there setting the time much anyway. And, B, I want the option to go ahead and take that off so I can grab the whole crown, uh, which is what I should have done in this next segment of the video you're about to see. So let's return to that. Just thought I'd bring this up in case it comes up in the comments section. So let me try again to go, uh, now that we've seen that and I've explained it, let's go to that, try and get to that first click so we can test the date. Okay, there's the pop. All right, there's first click for date. Yes, there it goes. I was spinning the wrong way. Okay, feels uh, feels a little silky, actually. It's not to any resistance at all. I guess you kind of want that. This is NH35 movement, by the way. Uh, so we're all familiar with that, right? All right, so there is the uh, first click for the date. And let's go out now. This is so awkward with the left hand. Um, and let's see. Uh, yeah, see, it. I'm not sure I like that. You kind of have to, and again, it's it's awkward because it's my left hand, so I'm like, I can't hold, I can't normally have that feel to hold that in place and spin the crown at the same time. These are first world problems here. <laughs> okay, I'm learning as I go. That's awkward with the left hand. All right, let's see if, uh, well, hopefully we're, no, we're not even, we're at noon. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to fast forward. I could do this and do a, a one-handed thumb kind of thing, but I always think that that's not proper tension on the uh, on the stem. I like to uh, have two fingers uh, on the crown. All right, I went pretty quick there. All right, let's see where this date snaps over. Oh, okay. The, the usual, kind of about 11.55 or so. I was going kind of quick, so. All right, we'll get the hands out of the way and get back into the watch. Uh, the threads are smooth. That, that's the first time I've had a steel dive where it's not all rigid uh, on the uh, crown threads. It actually uh, it grabbed, and other than my left-handed mistake, it grabbed and stayed. Here's something uh, I didn't really take notice when I opened up the watch, uh, but it looks like the, the edging here might be just a little off. You see that? So that might be a, a little bit of a quality control issue. I mean, I don't know how close you can get that, I guess. It feels good here. You can see there's there's the slightest bump, but that chamfered edge looks like it just doesn't quite match up. You see that? It's trying. But I don't know if that's a per watch basis or if they're all going to look like that. So one minor flaw. All right, let's look at the case back. I should have done that while I was uh, back there with the, uh, the bracelet, but uh, I didn't. Uh-huh. Look at that. I see a sticker. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that one was sticky. All right. So that is the Army Engineer. And then we've got all stainless steel, automatic movement, NH35, dive, 1200 meter by steel dive. All right. Time to measure up. This is going to be a big boy. I mean, you know that, right? There's no way. <laughs> I think this is going to be surprising, though. Um, I, I obviously looked at the measurements before I uh, ordered it, but I don't remember it. The diameter, uh, 
is 56. And I don't know how you don't include that. So that's not actually as big as it sound, as it looked, right? I mean, when you see that distance there, and then just this little edge too, you just think, mainly this side though, you think it's going to be massive. So I'm kind of surprised. Um, let me just measure, just for fun, uh, just the edge of the bezel. So if this were a traditional case, you're looking at 45. Okay, so that's not too bad, right? So, but that gives you an idea. So you, if somebody, if, you know, if a if 45 is a big watch for you, this thing is huge. And again, I'll show it on my eight inch wrist in uh, just a bit here. Okay, and then so here's that lug to lug, 48. Not bad, huh? How often do you get that? 56 by 48. But uh, man, so that's a short stubby. And so that's why, I mean, this might work on on smaller wrists because it's not too tall on the wrist. Uh, it's just it's just wide this way. So, huh, very nice. So if you uh, got a smaller wrist, don't rule this out yet. Maybe you can find some other reviews uh, on the smaller wrist and check it out. But uh, I digress. Let's carry on. All right, so your thickness is 15 point, now let's just say 16. And your lug width is 22. Wow, well this thing is awesome. I'm gonna try it on uh, now. So uh, today I'm wearing my uh, Seiko Reca Recraft series, SNK N03. I've got a full review out on this uh, watch. You know, check it out right there and uh, see if it's something you like as well. Okay, I obviously have not sized this and, uh, oh wow. That feels good, looks good. There we go. Wow. Okay, 8-inch wrist here, and that is perfect. Man, I love that size. And uh, that doesn't feel too bad. And so what's funny, too, uh, or great, rather, is if you're somebody who wears the your watch uh, more lower uh, on the wrist, more the other side of the knuckle, then that thing's not going to die. That's not going to dig into you. If you're left-handed, well, you're screwed. <laughs> Uh, wow. And see, and I'm not usually into black watches as well, black dials, but I really like this one. Uh, it, it looks much better in person than it did in pictures and even than it does here on camera. Uh, but it's very stunning, especially with that orange, uh, minute hand, just excellent. Uh, so anyway, you see, you've got, uh, room to take out, uh, some links. So easily will fit uh, a larger wrist. Wow. Very nice. Okay, I know you've been waiting for the luminescence. Here it is, pretty bright, huh? Now, when I first saw this, I thought that it was uh, C3 green on the dial and uh, blue on the outer uh, bezel. But as it ends up, you see it here next to the SD1970, which we know is C3 green on the uh, dial. Uh, you can tell that uh, on the left, the SD69 is all BGW9 uh, blue luminescence. It's just brighter on the dial than it is on the bezel. Hey, if you're a Steel Dive fan, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content I have to show you. And if you made it this far in the video, take a look down the lower left-hand corner. If you haven't hit that like button yet, please do so now. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Wit with so many watches, so little time, and money.